Okay. It must be eight o'clock because it's time for a live stream. Welcome. Uh, hello, everyone. Um, I'm going to say preemptively hello, everyone, even though I know there's not many people online just yet. But um, actually, there's no one online just yet. It is eight o'clock. I haven't got my timing wrong. It's all right. It often starts a bit slow. Um, you know what? I got asked a great question uh, by a new member. Jay Hodes, welcome to the society. Welcome to the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society. Welcome aboard. What a time to be alive. What a time to be a member of the society and enjoy all the benefits of the club that it offers and enjoy all the single casks we release, all the uh, knowledge we impart, all the tastings we host, the unfiltered magazine, the partner bars. There's so much. There's so much going on always at the society around the world, of course, in Australia as well. We're always trying to build the experience up for members and provide something special for members to jump into. So I really appreciate you um, joining Jay Hodes. Um, if you tune in tonight, um, you can watch this later otherwise. John McShane. John McShane joined. John, good to see you. You'll have to excuse me. I'm also enjoying a, um, a crisp pale ale at the moment because it's 8 o'clock. Uh, dinner's already been and gone. But uh, this is... Um, it's quite warm tonight. It is quite humid uh, in Sydney tonight. And it's um, something like 28 degrees right now. Um, for those in the American scale, I don't know what that is in, in Fahrenheit. You have to look that up, sorry. Uh, but this is um, Stomping Ground Pale Ale, for those who are interested in knowing what beer I'm drinking. Um, John McShane, Dram joined, Keegan Emmons joined, uh, Sally Lau joined. Good to see you, good to see you, good to see you. Um, okay, what I want to discuss was a question I got asked by a new member um, just a day ago uh, about how to set up your own tasting uh, at home and how to host your own uh, event at home for guests, for friends. If you're having a few friends around, you want to impress with a few good single casks and how to make the most of that. I hope you can all hear me okay. I haven't even touched my mic, but I'm not going to right now. I hope you can all hear me. I'm just going to put the mic there. So what's the best way to impress and and the best, well, not so much impress, but the best way to host your own at home tasting? Um, <laughs> that'll go well with the monkey shoulder. That's there for a reason, Robert. I'll promise you I'm going to get to that. Um, uh, Gianni Ching joined, Whiskey Brad joined, good to see you all. Hillwood Whiskey joined, good to see you, good to see you. The question I got asked yesterday from a member was how to host your own tasting at home. The first step is, and this is um, this is a really easy one. First step is print out the home tasting kit. Uh, if you've got access to a color printer, which a lot of people do, um, you've got access to a color printer, even black and white might work, but color works a lot better. Um, you can print out all the home tasting kit straight off the Society website. You just down It's just downloadable as a PDF. I've just printed one off just now. Um, here it is. There's different pages with different quotes on each one. And it gives you a chance to jump in. And I'm going to hold that a bit closer so you can see what all this is about. On each there, this is a space for three whiskies here. So you can obviously print out two if you're doing six whiskies. Um, or three if you're doing nine. Or me yesterday with Andrew. Andrew and I tasted through, I think, 70 whiskies yesterday. And it's a weird feeling drinking 70 whiskies in a day and not actually swallowing any. Because it's all it all goes into a spittoon at the end. It's a weird, it's a weird sensation because um, you feel like you've drunk a lot of whiskey, but you certainly aren't. But you're completely sober at the same time. It's very weird. Anyway, but it's great to do whiskey judging. It's great to be able to ask to be a judge, and I was asked to be a judge on the uh, Australia uh, Australian International Spirits Competition. Um, it's one of the big ones forming in Australia, and it's uh, it was the inaugural one yesterday, which was uh, for Sydney. Sorry, which was um, I think inaugural for Sydney. I think I've held it twice, two years in Adelaide. And once now in Sydney, it was a huge success. Um, okay. <laughs> or 135 if you're doing 45. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, that, that, yeah, 40, well, yeah, 40, anyway. Um, this is, this is the tasting notes as you can see now. Each column has tasting notes, a score, cask number, name, and ABV. I'll hold that up so you can see it. It makes a lot more sense if you just download it off our website. It's completely free. We've designed these for our members to have a chance at, at grabbing something and having some, doing their own home tasting. It's a really cool little idea, and it's a freebie. It's actually a freebie as well. So uh, I've got the monkey shot here for a reason. I'll get to that. But the reason why I want to talk about the order of what to, of which to put whiskies in. Now, here's my tips for hosting your own home tasting for friends. One is don't go overboard. Four or five whiskies, especially for your first one, is probably ample. It's often easy to get carried away and there's things you want to open. You get all excited about different whiskies and you want to try eight, nine, ten different whiskies. You will have that opportunity, but if you're just starting out with doing home tastings, tread carefully in that uh, less is more in this scenario. 
especially if you want to really properly assess these whiskies, take a good 20 minutes with each one. Um, your palate will get fatigued if you, if you go past sort of six or seven, for most people I say. Um, some people have a, a much stronger palate over time that develops that you, uh, the suddenly, you know, six or seven whiskies isn't anything anymore. So it's like, you know, you be, you'll be fine with six or seven. I recommend starting with four or five, probably four. You can probably go to as far as five. Now, uh, the way that I do that is that I'll start with something inoffensive. I'll start with something that's light, accessible, and provides a benchmark for where the industry is in many ways. So it's a benchmark of saying, hey, look, this is, um, this is uh, you know, a, a product on the market that everyone can kind of get around. And my example of that that I've used, that I have used at countless private tastings, society member nights, everything, was something like Monkey Shoulder. It's a blended malt. It's smooth and rich, as it says on the label, which is a funny sense of funny use of words. Um, batch twenty seven. That doesn't mean anything. I think every batch is batch twenty seven. Blended malt Scotch whiskey, but uh, it's not a grain whiskey. It's a blended malt whiskey. It's not a not your typical blended whiskey. So there's no grain component in this. It's just malt whiskies. Um, the the recipe has changed over the years. It has changed considerably since it came out. I would say not considerably. Sorry, that's not the right word. It's changed. It's changed enough to notice. To remark on but it is it's it's a remarkable uh blender malt it's around the 50 dollar mark and it's a great way to start people off i don't like starting people with a car strength whiskey uh i find that it can often overwhelm the palate um some people like to i, I just think for especially if it's your first one we just remember as we're talking about your first home tasting the first time you're introducing friends to single malt whiskey or whiskey in general i like starting with something that doesn't uh that won't offend the palate won't make people shriek in horror as they're uh, drink a six something at sixty seven point six percent ABV. Um, yes, I think a lot of society members, someone like myself, a lot of you, will um, quite happily pour a whiskey that's sitting at something sixty sixty something percent, fifty something percent natural cast strength, and you won't, you won't wince. It'll be fine. Like, yep, that's I enjoy that. You can enjoy that even at ten o'clock in the morning. I don't recommend it, but you could. Um, and so, but others. Definitely not. It's it's definitely something you work up to. And I don't like to shock people into enjoying whiskey. I like to ease them into it. Um... <laughs> Ducker Bucket joins. Gaucho. Gaucho um, whiskey Gaucho. Doctor. And um, Ducket Bucket writes, Tim wanted to heckle you, but I told him that's irresponsible. Uh, you can tell Tim I don't mind a bit of heckling. In fact, I've had heckling on this channel before, and I, um, I, I, I take it in my stride. So he's welcome to give it his best shot. Um, but I, I doubt that he'll um, he'll he'll rustle my jimmies. So, um, <laughs> with that said, like I said, um, uh, so like I said, something I like to start with that's inoffensive and a bit of fun. However, there I like to move on to something that is car strength and is uh, will sort of spark the palate a bit. As I say, this one sort of welcomes the palate. The next one is to spark the palate. That's why I find things in these sweet, fruity, and mellow, young and sprightly categories for us is a really good point to start. Something like a 72.76, The Deserted Forest. Yes, it's a play on words. Um, that's a single cask from Distillery 76, 72, sorry, but Distillery 72. It's a 10 year old, it's a refill bourbon barrel. It's 61.9%, but it's young and sprightly. It's, it's the one I feel like pouring right now. Here we go. So I'm gonna pour just a, a dash of that. Uh, it's one I just really felt like actually. So I normally have water this, but I'm not organized enough to have my water uh, jug on the table tonight. Um, okay. <laughs> he says, 67% uh, is a breakfast whiskey. <laughs> look, look, you can tell, t uh, duck it, bucket, you can tell Tim that, uh, you know, if you've got a tongue as, uh, as, uh, I guess, adjusted to car strength as his is, for lack of a better word, then yes, yeah, 67% might be a breakfast whiskey. But I've talked about proof before on this channel, and I legitimately think that sometimes um, car strength at a little bit lower, and he knows this and you know this, uh, especially with things like your TRBs and whatnot, um, you know, high proof, uh, for lack of a better word, but high proof, but mid 50s and high 50s can make for a lovely uh, drinking experience. And not every whiskey needs to be 77.1% and blow your face off. There needs, you know what, I've said this before, there needs to be some sort of uh, symphonic development to good whiskey drinking. 
It's not all just rock and roll and uh, and loud martial amplifiers up the back of your throat. There is some there is some nuance, and that's why I love there. And just in and not not to um not to say you don't. It's just that there's um I would say that a lot of uh, especially TIBs uh, have a lot of even now I'll, I'll correct myself there. Correction in, um that market correction was a good example of a whiskey that was had a lot of um uh, symphonic elements to it and really built up over time and changed over time in the glass. That was fantastic. I find a lot of a lot of yours do that. Okay, so I'm getting off tangent here. So we're um. Old and <laughs> I, I just for the record, I did not say that. Okay, so um, this is an example of uh, it's even frosting up a bit, isn't it? Wow, this one's uh, oxidizing quickly in the glass, which is an interesting thing to happen, but it does happen for a non chill filtered whiskey. Funny, is that, is that um, it's very sweet, very saccharine, it's lovely. But it's, it's, it's kind of not too separated from monkey shoulder. It is completely separated, but at the same time, it's a way that you can start with a, a blended malt. And it's like, it's, you can smell it's quite youthful. It's definitely not 10 years old, but it's, um, you know, it's probably less than half of that. But it's um, less than half of 10, not less than half of five, sorry. Um, and it's, um, this is an example where this will really sort of spark the palate. Welcome palate, spark palate. 61.4, 61.2%, sorry. No, 61.9%. I'll get it right eventually. It's young. It's sprightly. It's full of flavor. It's sweet. I like to start with sweeter flavors for home tastings because it's often people can relate with them a bit easier. If you go straight into sort of, you know, really diesel kind of savory complex whiskies that uh, are from refill hoggies or, or whatnot or from Campbelltown and they might be a little bit too um, complex off the bat they might be missing some of the nuance that they might the, the taste of the person joining you might miss some of the nuance might be a bit like you might be going oh wow how good is this whiskey from Glen Scotia and they might be saying oh I don't get it it just sort of tastes like hay bales and diesel fumes to me there is a bit of that in the whiskey of course you get a bit of that, that element of some of those kind of funky sort of island whiskies um, but um, and coastal whiskies, but you just don't. It might be a bit lost in them, so that's why I don't always dive into that first. Um, uh, Malt official that says had a smorgan, smorgan, smorgan at sixty eight point two percent, and you'd never know it. Pete and a well made spirit supports it. You know what, Malt official, that's really true. A really well made spirit can support that that proof, uh, especially. And I always like to think of it as spirit and cask integration, not just. Here's some hot spirit in a hot cask and hot outcome. I like to think it's it's spirit and cask integration, uh, which is which makes for uh, the the final product to be the real the real McCoy, for lack of a better phrase. I don't have many words today. <laughs> My brain is still a bit numb from today and yesterday. It's been a, a busy start to the to the week with the judging competition with the judge the judging uh, spirits judging yesterday. And, uh, and today was just a frantic day. You know that thing where you take you don't work a normal day on Monday, so Tuesday it's sort of like you've got to squeeze Monday and Tuesday into Tuesday. So that's what today was. Um, so yeah, I mean, uh, more official. Even some of the some of the spirits, as you know, we've put out. We've had some society spirits at eighty two point eight percent, as seventy one point one. You know, we've seen them all. Uh, everything from forty point zero all the way up to eighty two something. Spirit integration with the cask is what makes that good. But we're not. We're not I'm getting a bit off tangent here. So, um, in tasting order for this score for this for this uh, sheet, what I'd do is I'd start with something like a blended malt. I'd start with something maybe maybe just a blended whiskey could do it, but I like blended malts, and so I'd start with something a little bit just above where I'd normally start with. I wouldn't start with something like a like a black label or a because uh, I, well I don't have any of that anyway. But if I had, I wouldn't start with something like that. Second thing is I'd then move to something that is a bit sweet, car strength. Uh, Young, inoffensive, but uh, still delightfully complex on the palate. And that's where I'd start introducing the whole thing about adding water. How to add it, show them how, I'd show my guests how to add water. If anyone's ever been to any of my tastings, you, you've seen me do all this before. And the third one I'd move on to from there would be a complete change in pace. I'd move into something that's a fair bit older, a fair bit more complex, and I'd, but I'd stick with maybe Speyside Highland kind of whiskey. Well, I wouldn't go with something like a 20 something year old Isla whiskey, but I'd go with something like a 23 year old in this case, um, a Space Ida. This one's at 55%. Encourage them to take a glass of water between each one. Something like that, something a bit old and dignified, something a bit fun that is, um, 
that you can show what complexity of spirit versus a younger cask is and how that complexity plays on the on the palate and you'll find a lot of people might actually end up liking the younger one more especially newer newcomers to whiskey um, which is great um whiskey and helmet joined good to see whiskey and helmet i don't know who's behind uh, that instagram but i'm gonna go with brooke or jules or both um diana patrice joined carlo sw joined Marley Barry joined. Always good to see so many people joining the live stream. We do this just a little interlude just whilst I'm talking about what I'm talking about is that uh, it's we do this every night. I do this live stream every single night except weekends. So I've been doing it Monday to Friday. It's been a lot of fun and uh, it's still going. So still love talking about whiskey with you guys. Love taking your questions. And tonight's question was from Jay Hodes 77 from yesterday who's just joined the society uh, this morning or last night he joined. And he says... Um, he asked, what's the best way to really, the, the, the condensed version of his question was, what's the, what's the best way to do a home tasting? And I've, I've started by talking about that. If you've missed the beginning of this, you can go back onto our Instagram story and catch it or on our YouTube channel in about an hour's time. Now, as I said, I wouldn't go past four whiskeys to begin with. Four or five at a max because you're going to overwhelm the palate of a new drinker. It's a way to confuse them and suddenly it's like the, the alcohol content will start to overtake and it'll be a bit sort of like, um, it'll go from enjoyment to drunkenness and that's not good so it's this is about appreciation this is about enjoyment now if you were to do five here's what i would do next i would throw a curveball in i'd throw a non-scotch whiskey or even a non-whiskey into the lineup especially if you're doing a home tasting that might be something like a single cast cognac it might be something like a cognac it might be something like an armagnac it might be something like a, um, a bourbon if we're sticking with whiskey it might be something like a rye I like to switch up the grain type or the country type of spirit or entirely different spirit entirely. You could go with a uh, Kwe Chow if you wanted, or you could go with a Cognac, or you could go with something like that that really starts um, uh, really taking taking a journey on a different tangent. And you'll find, oh, it's, that's really quite different. That's, maybe I like that more. Maybe I might like Cognac more. Or maybe I like Armagnac more. Or maybe I like uh, Liqueur. Oh, no, I'll stick away from Liqueurs in this case. But then, you know, or maybe something heavily sherried. Uh, if you want to stick with um, whiskeys, you could go with something sherried. You could go with an American single malt. There's a lot of different things you could do um, to change up the pace a bit and take a different direction. And I think that's a really cool point to do because otherwise it can be a bit insular. I don't like to take newcomers on a round the world sort of scenario of let's drink a Japanese, Irish, American, Scottish, Australian whiskey. I find that, again, overwhelming for new drinkers. They, they're sort of like, it's, it's also very pigeonholing of the experience of that of that spirit type it's like oh here's a it's like you know there's a thousand different scotch whiskies for argument's sake and here's one i'd rather say here's five plus one something different anyway that's just how i like to run it so let's just assume that's our next one in the lineup i can't see my screen anymore that's all right um and my beer's getting warm this is quite warm in sydney tonight excuse me oh it's bliss okay now where i would finish up with um, where I'd finish up with would be something peated, of course, something heavily peated, preferably, or, you know, just, just peated, doesn't need to be over the top, it's not about, it's not about throwing curveballs at people's heads, it's about experiencing flavour, adding lots of water, and discovering how they enjoy whiskey, uh, if they, if you're discovering, if you're going through a neat flight, or if you're doing it through a cocktail flight, or if you're doing however you do it, but I'd just say, I'll go with something peated, uh, something like uh, this, 135.15, I'm afraid has sold out, but is back to the suture. It, it was a heavily peated eight-year-old from the Highlands. So you could talk about how not all uh, peated whiskey comes from Isla. That's a really interesting discussion within itself. Of course, you could go with something from Isla. You could go like a 20-year-old from Distillery 29 here, permeating peat smoke from a while back, that one. Um, yeah, peat bomb to give him a slap. Something like, you could go with peat. I'd, I'd stick with peated, though. I'd stick with something that is uh, for the last whiskey. And so in generally, I go with blended, young and sprightly, something or something, you know, sweet, yet fruit, fruity and mellow, so, sprightly, something old and dignified and, and really sort of like quite special, the real gem, in, gem sitting there. Then I like to throw a curveball, like a cognac, a bourbon, a rye, an American single malt, something like that. Or it could, you could just go with a real big sherry bomb, something that really sort of goes, wow, what's all this about? Bourbon often does that quite well especially good craft bourbons. Um, and then at the end, I'd throw a peat bomb in. And that's why something like a Back to the Suture would do that really well. That's a big peated whiskey and a bit different as well. Um, so that would be my five lineup right there. You're looking at it. I'm just going to see if I can line that up so you can see that in the camera. Um, 
but yeah, that's that's the long and short of it. Now, here are some other tips talking about how to how how to host your own home tasting. One other tip I'd say is uh, I generally focus on proof over peat. Now, what that means is if I've got a peated whiskey that's at forty four percent, but I've got a non a completely non peated whiskey at sixty seven percent. I don't necessarily always put the peat last then. I find that proof can uh, be more of a fatiguer to the palate. Fatiguer? Is that a word? Proof can fatigue the palate more than than peat can. Because peat can dissipate in the palate quite easily sometimes and a, a few glasses of water. Whereas I find even a glass of water after some big proof can be a bit like, no, my, my, my tongue's still a bit sort of anesthetized, a bit sort of... And the proof can put people off... Uh, the peat then I find sometimes it's not always the case I always try and put the peat last but it's often it, it, you've got to taste them first and say okay well I think this one should come first generally speaking the peat will be at the end so that's one tip one tip the second tip I'd say is uh, encourage water encourage water and I mean drinking it by the glass of course um, but adding it a drop of it here and there to each whiskey Adding that water will really open up the aromas, dilute the ethanol, bring out all these lovely floral, rich aromas. Uh, I'll stick by what I've said before about adding water to whiskey. My general rule of thumb is young whiskies and ex-bourbon barrels and first fill bourbon barrels, whatever, often and very much appreciate a drop of water. Sherried whiskies, I tread carefully with water. As in, I very rarely add water to my sherried whiskies. A drop here or there sometimes, but infrequently. And old whiskies. I never add water. I just find that, well, not never, never say never, but I err on the side of never add water. I just, they fall apart too quickly. So that's, that was, that would be how I would host a home tasting. If, um, which was a great question from Jay Herds yesterday. So thank you for asking that one. How would you go about it? That's how I'd host your own home, own home tasting. First step is, uh, I'm gonna topple something here. I know it, that, there we go. First point is, Go onto the Society website, go to the shop page. I think it's on page two or three in the shop. Uh, there's the home tasting kit. It's got three or four PDFs in it, I think, um, including tasting mats, flavor profiles, tips on everything. That's all there on the Society website. That's free. That's free for everyone. That's, you can just download that. That's a really good uh, reference point for you to have your own home tasting. Second of all, if it's beginners, like I say, start with a lineup of four or five whiskeys. I wouldn't go overboard on that. That's the second tip. Third is start young, light. Start with a blended malt, perhaps start with a blended whiskey to really, as I say, warm the palate, welcome the palate, and then move into something car strength to spark the palate, to really spark the imagination, get the taste buds moving. And then, like I said, peat at the end generally, but not always. It depends on the peated whiskey. And that comes down to just, you know, you testing and trialing and working out what works best. And just lay out some uh, some snacks if you like, and lay out some... Some cheese, crackers, charcuterie, whatnot. Uh, just avoid chili and blue cheese and a few other things. We can talk about matching on the next episode if you like. But I think that's a really good one for tonight. Nick Husek asks, For a first tasting, would you stick to bourbon barrels or include other barrel types? No, no, Nick, I, I would absolutely uh, try other barrel types. And that's what I meant by that sort of curveball at the fourth point here. You could throw in a heavily sherried whiskey, a port cask whiskey, you could throw in, like I say, a bourbon, a cognac, a, a rye, an armagnac. You could throw in something a bit of a curveball there. There's no necess- It's not necessarily staying with bourbon casks the whole way through. No, I mean I love I love mixing up cask type in it, especially even in beginner tasting, because you'll find some people might go, "Oh, I really like bourbon barrels," or "I don't like sherry casks," or vice versa. Or you might throw something in like a port pipe, and they go, oh, "That's fantastic! I didn't have a port pipe whiskey before," and they love it. So there's um, uh, but generally, yeah, I like to maintain the the honest integrity that you get out of a great bourbon barrel, but that's another story. Uh, Moscatel and Chenin Blanc. Robert Akers, I know exactly which bottles you're talking about. <laughs> um, <laughs> Mr. Den 15, Tim McGuigan. Guys, we're just wrapping up for tonight. It's been another great live stream. Thank you so much for the last 30 minutes. Um, if you missed the beginning of this, we were talking about how to host a home tasting and just some tips from me on how to go about it. Uh, and some of the resources that we offer up for free, including this video and including the home tasting kit on our website to get around. Uh, That's all from me tonight. If you missed last night's episode, it's up on the the, uh, YouTube channel now, as of now, um, because it's uh, it's a great one. Very impromptu, sitting in a meeting room out the back of the the Grace Hotel last night with our cellar master, Andrew Dervidge, uh, and we had a great chat um, uh, talking about 
uh, in a, the video is actually titled "Can You Taste uh, Assess Sixty Plus Whiskies in a Day?" And we had a chat about what we did that day. It was it was actually quite interesting to see how how we went about it and what it meant, and, and maybe the results will be available soon. That's up to the judging pa- the judging panel and the organisers. So I'm looking forward to that. Appreciate your inputs tonight. Um, <laughs> John McShane, our global whiskey, our global ambassador of the society, says. Well done, mate. You've put me in the mood, and it's still breakfast time here in Argyll. <laughs> well, I mean, if if Ducket Bucket can get away with a breakfast drown, I'm sure you can, John. Um, get on the sixty-seven percent, John. <laughs> yeah, that is breakfast whiskey. Um, uh, thanks for winding me up, Ducket Bucket. Always appreciated. Uh, John and Robert and everyone who joined in tonight really appreciate it. Always great having a chat with you guys and the girls and everyone who joins the stream. So. Um, from here, it's at the uh, Ambassador HQ. I wish you good night, and I'll see you tomorrow night. Cheers.